Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video in our Tag Mixer series. I think we're like 23, 23, 24, 24, 24, 24, something like that. Anyway, hey, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, will you? Uh, it's free. It takes no time at all and makes me smile. I appreciate that. So today what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep this video as close to 10 minutes as possible, even though every single video I do, and I mean everyone with consistency, never meets the 10 minute um, window. But uh, anyway, let's try for that today. We're going to try to keep this video really simple by doing just two things in our Tag Mixer plugin. Uh, last video, we went ahead and did some JavaScript stuff. And like I said at the end of that video, we want those stars. Give me those stars, right? I said I was Nemesis, meaning like uh, I get to give a little star in our mind map when I complete something new. Well, we're not going to be able to do that this time because uh, we have one line in that mind map that's like for JavaScript items, meaning all the things we do to modify this. Then unfortunately we have quite a few more of those to do. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to stick around a few simple ones, which is, let's take a look. All right, so in our list we have, we've already done font size, we've already done font color. I think in this video we're going to go for background color and opacity because both of those are relatively easy. And then we'll go for change words being its own and change links being its own, okay? Uh, both of these, this will be its own, this will be its own. These two will be now, and image will also be its own. So let's go ahead and do those two now uh, by pulling up trusty old Visual Studio Code. And what we're going to do is we're going to be in the admin file, in the partials, and in the tag mixer package settings page because that's where all of the fun stuff's getting done. And uh, okay, so we're actually we're right where we need to be. We're actually down on line 208. This is our script function that add the item. Now, if you're lost. I don't blame you. This has been a lot of videos, and it's been spread over a long time. Uh, mostly my fault. So down here, when this button gets clicked, it has a function that gets called, and that function just so happens to activate. Well, it get, has a function that gets get called, right? And that function just so happens to be this one, where we're getting the element, and we're getting its font, and we're figuring out by getting its value, we're determining what the user selected as a dropdown, and then we do the item. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to quickly program in background color. Since we already set this selector, it's going to be really easy, or this color selector, rather. It's going to be really easy for us to do that, and I'll show you right now. So all we have to do is create another else if statement, and then some more squiggly squigglies. And we can do this really easy by copying the value above. Since we already wrote this, it makes a lot of sense just to copy it each time. And instead of saying change the font color, we're now going to say change the background color are wonderful now as you know in javascript as i've been pointing out uh, it's just style and then whatever style you want to modify this is the cool way of doing it in vanilla js which just is a fancy dancy way of saying it's just normal javascript meaning it doesn't have jquery or any of that stuff on top of it and that crazy stuff okay so what would you imagine goes here uh-huh so oh it is wow that was crazy wasn't it so there's background color okay i'm trying to also make this pretty obvious to show you that JavaScript, when you're doing this kind of thing and building, like when we're building uh, op preset options for the user, we can actually go as far as we want. We could create a chart that has every option in it. We could do all of that. But, you know, that's why kind of why I left it code, hand codable, so that the user can also hand code things in if they want to get more advanced than what we give them. So, which, and in the future, maybe I'll update it more. I don't know. Okay, so all we did now was just say style background. Easy enough. Now, the thing is, obviously, we should at least test it. So let's just go ahead and load in this package rule set. It'll reload the page, which will accomplish getting the new code. And then let's just choose a color, maybe like a, oh, I don't know. Let's go for like, I was going to say sunflower, but let's just go for, uh, I want something I can see, like a purple. Purple's good again. Well, actually, never mind, because the font's still purple. So let's go with uh, orange. Yeah, there we go. Give me that. All right, the test headline is still the ID of item we're dealing with. So we can copy and paste that there. Background color, add to package. Uh-oh, what did we do wrong? Let's see. Oh, <laughs> no if statements. Well, that's, that'll do it to you. Okay, so let's just do e.value, double equals. I was so busy trying to make it easy on myself, I forgot to do the important part. Okay, now let's go back and take a look. That's changed background color, so we could type that in very easily. And then also remember, if you have a problem with these, just always double check your spelling or double check your case because this is checking case sensitive, all right? Meaning that if you had a lowercase b or something like that, it's not going to work. So e dot value equals equals. All right, now I think we're in business. Let's refresh. Oh, no, I wanted to just load the package rules again, actually. All right, let's just load those again. And then once again, let's go for like uh, orange or something. I think orange will be fine. 
Yeah, that'll work. Take that value. And then also the test headline ID. Paste that in. Now let's go for the background color. And there it is. Simple enough. Look at that. There it is on the style again. Let's save that package rule and then let's go check it out, man. Let's see what it actually looks like. Now, this should have orange behind it if I'm not an idiot. Okay, perfect. So now we have it. I mean, the padding isn't necessarily correct, and that's probably due to the styling of this item or the built-in styling of this theme. Yours would probably be more padded correctly. If not, we could also change the padding of the item and whatnot. So none of that really matters for now. But I just want to show there's the background. Okay, check, one and done. I think we're only at like five minutes or something. I'm really trying to keep this one in the, in the box this time. i got to get one of them in there. That's what the channel name is, and uh, none of them are meeting that. So... All right, so that was the background color. Now, the other one, the next one's going to be a little more complicated, opacity. The reason why this one is more complicated is not because it's harder to set. It's because we need to create an IE fallback. Uh, and no, this isn't like an IE, for example, given like in textbooks. This is like an Internet Explorer is what I mean by IE. This is fallback for Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer works slightly differently than newer, newer websites. All right. We still need to account for it because, you know, there are people that still use Internet Explorer. I don't know who those people are, but they do exist. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and just this time, let's program this part in first so I don't look so stupid on the backside. And let's just say, instead of change background color, it was just change opacity. I could go check it again, but I'm 99% sure that's what it is. All right, so we have two things we have to do here. The very first thing we can do is we can do the normal thing where we uh, just, you know, st st steal a little bit from above. And we're going to say change the opacity. Remember, it is important that you comment for yourself because later you'll come back to this, say you don't work on it for like, in my case, 99 days like an idiot, and then you don't remember anything that you did, and so the commenting helps you realign yourself. All right, so style, and instead of background, guess what it would be? Hmm? Can you take a guess? O P A. There it is. Not with the U, but get rid of the U. There it is. There's your opacity value. So now, and opacities, by the way, are set in a comma, or not comma, sorry, a decimal format. If you're not familiar with HTML or uh, CSS opacity, it goes 0 0.1, 0 0.2, all the way up to 1 or down to 0, meaning it's full 100% or down to 20%, but you do 0 0.2, 0 0.1, so, uh, or 0 0.9 if you want to be almost all the way visible, like 99% of the way visible. So that's what the user is going to do here. Now, to create the IE fallback is a slightly more complicated, so what we're going to do there is I'm going to go ahead and give myself uh, a couple line comments. Because I want to say something here, like maybe above code removes the decimal and add a zero for the IE fallback. Because we have to add a zero, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So, okay. So, in the above code here, let's do another one that says create a fallback for Internet Explorer as well. All right, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and create a uh, callback for this. And uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a new JS variable. We're going to call this something like uh, how, int IE value is fine. And then we're going to say document. Uh, we're going to get element by ID again. I should actually just be copy and pasting this stuff, but it's fine. From above, I mean, because uh, it's a, I could misspell get element by ID and all that. Okay, and the element we're going to be getting by ID is actually this here is the new value the user put in. That's going to be their 0 0.1, 0 0.9, whatever it is. And uh, we want the value. From that. Okay, so now we went ahead and got the value. Uh, that's going to go ahead and put, so if the user, back over here, let me just show you. So if the user types like 0 0.9 or like 0 0.5 right here, we, that's the value we want from this box. So that's what we're getting right here by new, new ID value, which we got right here too. We could have just copied this line. Okay, now with this line, what we need to do is we need to do a couple of simple replacements. So we're going to say int IE value equals. Now we're going to do something interesting here that I haven't shown yet, I don't think, which is, and maybe I've shown it in another video, I don't know. But it's called replace, and this is a string replace method in JavaScript. It's built into just base JavaScript, which allows you to search for a string, which is the first one here, and then replace it with another designated string like right here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be searching for zero dot because the user is going to put that in by default or they're going to have to put that in in order to make this work. If they don't do this, they'll break it. And we could error check them and all that, but at this point, I'm not going to. Maybe in the future we'll do that. And then uh, this is like something for a more advanced person anyway who understands some basic JS. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say replace it with nothing. And I'll show you why in a second why this matters. And then we have to do one more thing, which is 
We're going to append a character on the end of this. Uh, uh, if you do a plus equals this way, it's like uh, it's an append, meaning it doesn't replace or do anything like that. It just appends a character at the very end of the string. And I'll show you what that means here in a second, too. But essentially what we're doing is we're, so the user is going to put in 0 0.5, okay? That's what's going to happen here. So they put in 0 0.5. And then what happens is, is this grabs that value, stores it in a variable called int IE value. Then int IE value equals itself, but it's going to replace that 0 dot with nothing. In this case, that would return 5. Okay, so the variable would now equal 5. That's what int IE value would equal. Then if we append a 0, it's going to equal 50 because it's going to be 5, 0. It's not adding it or anything like, like uh, mathematically. It's just appending it like a sentence string. Okay, so it's just appending when you do plus equals this way. So it's just adding it to the end. So now we have 50, and in IE, it uses a uh, normal percentage scale from 0 to 100, so that makes 0. 0.5, 50. Does that make sense? Okay, so if the user does 6, it's 60. All right, I hope you're on board. So that took care of that, but we still have to output it as well. So here's how we can do that. We're going to take this whole output string, put it down here. We're going to steal again, and then... Instead of op uh, opacity as our style, we're actually going to tap into something else called filter. And, uh, and uh, because if we do that, we're going to come over here and we're going to type something in for IE. We're going to say alpha. This is the IE version of this. Opacity. And then we're going to say equals. And we're going to leave it right there. And then instead of this document, get element, and all that, we're not going to do that. What we're instead going to output right here is... Can you guess? Can you guess? Can you guess? Yes, we're going to output int IE value because that contains that 50% that was converted by us above. And then all we have to do is close it just like that. And that's it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the front. We're going to do it. That's it. So this video is at 12 minutes. I think we just about got it this time. I'm so excited because I usually never get this on time. All right, let's load the package again. Here it comes. All right, now let's go ahead and do a... Opacity change. We know background works because we have it right there. Let's grab the test headline. Remember, that's the ID of the element we're modifying. That's the ID of this, this paragraph right here. Then let's change it to 0 0.5, 50% opacity. Let's add the package rule. Okay, take a look at what we added. They added these two lines right here. So it added style.opacity to 0 0.05. That's modern browsers. And then it did an IE fallback for alpha opacity to 50. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. So now we have a double fallback to work in multiple browsers. Let's save that package setting. Let's take a look at the test, and make sure it works, and then I feel pretty good about this video. Okay, we should see this get a little darker, or I mean a little lighter. Yes, look at that. Now it's at 50% opacity. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's load those rules again. I still have to change this part because it's not saving twice when I do it. I said I already know why. I just haven't been changing it because I just want to make videos showing how to improve uh, new stuff, and then we'll go back and fix that. So let's go ahead and change this down to, say, 30 and 30. Save the rule. And we're going to get over here. It should get even lighter, meaning it's disappearing, right? It's becoming where you can't see it. Okay. I think we did it. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and actually do is go ahead and leave these rules in here so we can actually see them all as we go. All right, so so far, quick recap. We did, we've done font size, color, background color, and opacity. Next video, we're going to replace words with another word. Now, uh, this is going to be something that you have to be very careful with because when you do this in JavaScript, it actually wants to replace every word in the page, and I mean every word, function words, everything. So if you say, I want to replace every case of um, Home Depot with Lowe's, it's going to look for every instance of Home Depot on your entire page, even if you have a function named Home Depot. So, and we could go through the case of wanting it just to change in H1s, H2s, paragraphs, all that kind of stuff, which we could do. We really could do. Or instead, um, I'll show you another way that you, you would instruct the user to use this, which is you want them to use special unique identifier words and then replace them. And this is like if somebody comes in on a keyword and you want the whole um, advertising page to change around that source, this is what you'd use it for. And then the same thing would happen with href locations. It's not quite as... Uh, as troublesome as this one can be. But uh, anyway, we'll work on that next time. But uh, hey, you know what? Thanks for tuning in as usual. I appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed, just hit the button, will you?
I appreciate it. It makes me smile, and hopefully it makes you smile too, and hopefully you're getting a lot of value out of these videos. I'm really happy I'm back to posting videos normally, and I got a new recording station set up so that it's a lot uh, more fun to do these and easier now. Before, I was working on a little laptop, and now I have like a whole like little studio set up, so... Anyway, once again, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. We're going to go ahead and work on that. Unfortunately, I can't give us any stars this time. I mean, I'm giving us like a mental star, like, yay, we did a good job. But I can't actually mark it with a real star because I made it one line item. But, uh, okay, well, you know, you know the drill. I'll see you guys in the next one where we move on to uh, adding some more JS to this thing.